Thomas William Weathers was born on a homestead near Epsi, Montana on August 13, 1923 to Chester and Dina Weathers. He was the third of eight siblings. He spent the first 14 years of his life on farms in Montana and Colorado with a short stay in Florida before his family eventually settled in Boulder, Colorado. Tom attended Boulder High School where he played basketball and football. He also met Virginia Manring there, and they both graduated in 1942. Throughout their entire lives, they were faithful attenders of their high school reunions, even becoming involved in the reunion committee for many years. Tom and Virginia were married November 14, 1942 in Denver, where they both worked. Tom enlisted in the Army Air Corps and was called to active duty June 13, 1943. Virginia moved to San Diego, California to be with her mother where Tom too was born. She returned to Denver where Tom was stationed temporarily and stayed in Denver while Tom was in service overseas in England. After 19 months in England, Tom returned to Denver and was honorably discharged as a corporal in the U.S. Army Air Corps. He then worked as a carpenter and construction foreman while attending University of Denver School of Architecture and Building Construction Management. In 1946, son John was born. Tom graduated with a Bachelor of Science degree in Business Administration in 1952. While still in college, Tom formed a construction business. Virginia also worked in the business, answering phone calls and doing much of the book work. Byron was born in 1953 and Diana in 1955. Diana remembers distinctly Saturday nights after baths, Tom was on hairbrushing duty of his little girl and they would share a Pepsi. They'd watch Saturday Night at the Movies, the only movie that was on television during the week back then. In 1956, Tom applied for a position as construction analyst with Veterans Administration Loan Guarantee Housing Section. He found much satisfaction in his work with housing design for veterans, especially paraplegic veterans. After two years with the VA, Tom went back to private industry as a construction superintendent. Gordon was born in 1957. Federal Housing Administration had requested Tom's abilities when he was employed by the VA, so he decided to accept and held the position of architectural examiner until his retirement in 1978. During his tenure, he had the responsibility of accepting plans, maintaining compliance with design criteria and construction details for housing, for elderly, nursing homes, low-income, and multifamily housing standards. In 1966, after much searching throughout Colorado, Mom and Dad discovered Yuma County and all it had to offer in the way of development for farming, especially irrigation. They purchased a farm eight miles east and two miles north of Yuma in December of 1966. The land they purchased was near Dale and Betty Kirkenslager, beginning a lifelong friendship between the two families. And I, for one, Dad, am truly grateful you chose Yuma. Your dream became my destiny. I fell in love with farming and found the girl I needed by my side as we continue your legacy. In early 1967, Tom asked his brother Don if he would join in a partnership. The spring of 1967 began a new era for the extended Weathers family. Remodeling of the farmhouse and watering the corn were tasks that needed extra hands. The farm became the place to go for aunts and uncles, cousins, and of course, Grammy. The farmhouse turned into a bunkhouse with all the visitors. The closed-in porch slept six kids, I think. What a great time for cousins to grow up working and playing together. The kids loved riding Barney and playing with mom and dad's dog, Flack. Additional land was purchased five miles east of Yuma in 1969. Tom and Virginia commuted with their family on weekends and days off for 12 years to work on the farm. In 1976, the partnership was dissolved and a new home was quickly constructed by Tom and family. Many called their small home the Little House on the Prairie. Tom and Virginia began attending the First Presbyterian Church in Yuma where he was a deacon and attended regularly until his health no longer permitted. He could find no record of his baptism as a child, so Tom was baptized at the Presbyterian Church in 1982, surrounded by most of his family. Tom and Virginia moved to their Yuma home permanently in 1978. The plan was for the original house to become a garage, and in 1991, the plan became a reality. 
The home addition was completed and the entire family gathered for Tom and Virginia's 50th anniversary there in 1992. Grandpa, you've been the rock of our family for so long and we are all eternally grateful that you've showed us all how to love each other and love the Lord. You taught me how to carry myself humbly when God blessed us with successes through hard work and determination. I stumbled across a newspaper clipping you wrote to the editor discussing the cost you were paying for a breakfast compared to what you were getting paid to produce that crop. In that letter, your wisdom and advocacy for farming and ranching was so evident and inspiring. I specifically enjoyed you communicating that cost discrepancy and ordering a second breakfast to straighten the situation out. The majority of our town probably shared a meal with you in one of many restaurants, and you impacted many lives spending time enjoying your food and taking in the benefits of your hard work. We love you. When Grandpa gave Nikki and I his brand for our wedding gift, he really surprised us. He worked very hard to make sure that everything was taken care of and it was all ready to go for us to use. He had high hopes of seeing his agricultural heritage continue. Little did he know, or maybe he did know, we would be putting that brand on more cattle than he'd ever dreamed of. Every time we put that brand on a calf, it reminds me how you started with nothing and continued to have faith and work hard. That heritage continues today through the generations. In 2019, I called my high school band director to tell him I got my master's degree in counseling 29 years after I graduated from high school and totally unprompted by me he told me he remembers that my parents showed up to practically every band event that I had in high school even though they had to drive over 30 miles each way and he remembers meeting my grandparents not just once but several times throughout my high school career and that he was always amazed at how they drove halfway across the country to visit family and attend my band events. They didn't just do this for me, but attended several graduations and other events for all their California grandkids from as early as the late 60s until they could no longer travel. In April 2003, Virginia passed after a short battle with cancer. Tom's loving care for his wife during this time had an impact on many around them. After Virginia's passing, Tom carried on her lifelong tradition of regular correspondence. Birthday and anniversary cards continued to be mailed until Tom's early 90s. Tom desired his independence, and he was able to continue to live in his home for five years longer with the help of at-home care. Renee and Javier Garcia of Ray became more than caregivers, they became part of the family. They were daily seen eating lunch in town at various restaurants. Tom would often jokingly refer to Renee as either his shadow or his hired man. By keeping Tom active in the community, Renee and Javier helped Tom maintain a high quality of life, which he and the entire family appreciated. Their friendship remained even after Tom moved to Yuma Life Care, including an unscheduled birthday trip across the street for lunch. One of my fondest memories of Great Grandpa was when I used to steal his pens out of his front shirt pocket. We would play this game over and over again because we would both keep on laughing. The game would end when he hit his pen and I couldn't find it. I loved laughing with you, Grandpa, and I love you. One of the last really good visits that I had with Grandpa was on this past Veterans Day. We arrived there and we were peering through the screen window, you know, like we had to do, and I saw that they had lovely flag centerpieces on all the tables and that they had tied red, white, and blue balloons to his chair. And I said, Grandpa, do you know what today is? He said, yes, it's Armistice Day. <laughs> so I told him that I really liked his World War II hat that he was wearing, and he kind of mumbled something about having a different hat, but that it was too tight on his head. And so I joked and said, kind of squeezed your brain, huh? And he started laughing and said, yes, and I can't afford that. <laughs> but you know, he, he taught us all about real patriotism by example, and he was a true patriot till the end. The local VFW believes that he could possibly have been the last surviving World War II veteran in Yuma County. Tom went to be with the Lord at 12.20 p.m. on December 20th, 2020. 12.20. 1220, 2020. So poetic. 
He was surrounded by his children, both in person and by phone. He is survived by his sister Geraldine Hatanaka of Denver, sister-in-law Billy Weathers of Kansas City, his five children and their spouses, 16 grandchildren, 30 great-grandchildren, and one great-great-grandchild.